Like, all right, we're gonna go in three, two, one. You're on the air. Hey, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you all for being here at home watching this meeting of the town board of the town of Carmel. We're coming to you via a Zoom platform. So we're virtual tonight and hopefully tonight will be the last, will be the final Zoom meeting that uh, we're gonna have to come to you uh, by. We're hoping to be back in town hall next Wednesday for a town board work session. That's June 10th. Uh, we will be social distancing, of course, and. Um, we will have our PPE available, and uh, the public the public is invited, but they have to they have to socially distance while they're in the meeting room. So you have to stay at least six feet apart. But you're welcome to attend the uh, town board meeting starting next Wednesday, June the 10th at 7 p.m. for town board work session. Okay, uh, Ann Spofford's with us, our town clerk. Hi, Ann. And Greg, Greg Fulcetti, town council is with us, and uh, Ann Pascarella, my administrative assistant, is here as well. Uh, Ann, I'm going to ask you to do a roll call vote. Councilman Shadow? Here. Councilman Borelli? Here. Councilman Lombardi? Here. Councilwoman McDonough? Here. Supervisor Schmidt? Here. So uh, all town board members are present. Before we get started, as always, we're going to have the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. So town board, uh, would, would everybody please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag? And Councilman Lombardi, would you lead us? Sure. I pledge allegiance to the flag, to the flag of, of the United States, States of America, America and to the Republic for which it stands, stands, one nation, under God, under God indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Remain standing for a moment of silence for all those men and women across the country are protecting us overseas, as well as domestically, police officers, our first responders, and to all those who have suffered injustice this past week or two weeks, uh, week and a half, um, we remember them and uh, we remember them and their sacrifices. Thank you. Hey, thank you, Frank. Okay, so tonight's meeting is a town board voting meeting, and we have 11 resolutions on tonight's agenda. The first item is to accept town board minutes of May 13th, 2020. I need a motion to accept those minutes. So moved. So moved by Councilman Lombardi, seconded by Councilman Channel. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, resolution number one. This evening is a resolution regarding the Town of Carmel Police Department 2020 Voluntary Retirement Incentive Program. Councilman Shannon, would you read resolution one, please? Wherefore, the Town Board for the Town of Carmel Town Board has developed a voluntary retirement incentive program for the program for the members of the Uni Uniform Patrol Division of the Town of Carmel Police Department, known as Department who are eligible to retire under a New York State retirement system plan offered by the town. Wherefore, the program and requirements therefore are fully described in the general announcement to eligible employees known as the general announcement and the attachments thereto. Wherefore, the Town of Carmel Police De Benevolent Association known as the PBA has agreed to the terms of the program and has executed a, a memorandum of agreement regarding same known as the MOA. Be it resolved that the town board hereby authorizes the town supervisor to take all necessary steps for the implementation and execution of the program, including but not limited to, on behalf of the town, executing the MOA with the PBA, signing any individual retirement agreement and general release, and three, authorizing payments required under the program. I offer this resolution as read. Second. Okay, offered by Councilman Channel, seconded by Councilman Lombardi. Roll call vote. Councilman Channel? Yes. Councilman Borelli? Yes. Councilman Lombardi? Aye. Councilwoman McDonough? Yes. Supervisor Schmidt? Yes. Motion carried. And um, I'd just like to say that, that this police retirement incentive program, if all four officers who are eligible to retire in 2020 if they all accept the uh, 
retirement incentive that the town is offering. It will save the taxpayers of the town of Carmel in excess of $550,000. About 57,000 in, in the 2020 budget and over a half a million dollars in the 2021 budget. So this is a, a significant savings for the taxpayers of the town of Carmel. And uh, I think it's really good that uh, the town board was thinking outside of the box and being creative and looking for ways to save the taxpayers money. And uh, Councilman Borelli and Councilman Channel initially met with the Carmel PBA members and to discuss the feasibility of a, a retirement incentive being offered by the town to the PBA members. And uh, Councilman Channel and Borelli brought it back to the board and we discussed it over several months and there was some negotiating back and forth. And we finally reached the terms of, a, of what I feel is an excellent uh, agreement for the town, the taxpayers, and for the PBA members as well. So I, I wanna thank the two liaisons to the Carmel PD, Councilman Schall and Borelli for initially uh, kicking the, meet, the discussions off with respect to a buyout. And uh, it culminated with the uh, agreement being approved tonight by the town board. And it, it's my understanding that all four officers who are eligible to retire in 2020 will be in fact retiring. Yes. And it's, it's important to point out with the shortfalls we're gonna have next year with the mortgage tax and, and everything else, this is a real critical piece to keeping the taxes at zero for next year. Yeah, yeah, it, it sure is Mike, I, I concur. Um, as I said, you know, you need to be creative sometimes and, uh, you know, you need to look for ways of cutting costs and saving, saving, uh, taxpayers dollars. And, uh, this is, this is a really significant amount of money that's going to be saved in next year's town budget. So I think it's a good, very good arrangement and, uh, it worked out really well. So thank you everybody. Uh, who was involved in negotiating it and uh, putting the pieces of this together where, where it was, uh, where it came to fruition tonight. So thank you all. A lot of hard work by PD also. Yes, yes, exactly. But uh, we're going to be looking for a new police chief. So, um, cause chief, chief Michael Kazari has indicated that uh, he's more than likely he's going to be accepting the terms of the buyout and retiring. So uh, mm -hmm. the town board will be uh, kicking off the search for uh, a new police chief. I was waiting, I was holding off until after the vote was taken tonight, obviously the resolution passed. So um, you know, we, could, we could move forward with that process at, at any time now. I would recommend the sooner we begin that search, the, the, the better, because it could take two months for us to, uh, have a uh, new police chief on board that that uh, we're going to be naming. So, uh, thank you, board, for uh, moving forward with this, and uh, we look forward to conducting the the uh, search for a successor to Chief Kazari. Kenny, as I had uh, mentioned to you once before, I would uh, be uh, happy to be part of the search uh, committee for a new chief. Okay. Myself as well. Okay. I, just, I was just assuming it was the entire town board doing the search. You know, if you had anybody interested, yeah. you would just bring it to. Yeah. You, so. Yeah. Well. Well. It will. It will be the whole board. It yeah, will. The whole board. It's the whole board. You know, and, and an appointment like this, which is a uh, you know, um, one of our top appointments, if you will, within the town, a police chief. It. It. The whole board needs to be involved in this. You have to be part of it, and. Mike, Mike, and Bob as the police liaisons, you know, you'll you'll be participating. And Frank, Frank, you'll be involved. And Susie, you'll be involved as well. So we all will be. Okay. I'm not sure how you wanted to set it up. Okay. All right. Thanks, Frank. All right. So we're going to move on to resolution number two. It's a resolution authorizing budget modifications. Councilwoman McDonough, would you read two, please? Whereas the town comptroller, Marianne Maxwell, has reviewed the proposed budget modifications for the period commencing January 1st, 2020, 
and ending April 30th, 2020 with the town board, which are detailed and explained on the attached budget revision scheduled 2020 slash 01. Now, therefore, be resolved that the town board of the town of Carmel hereby authorizes and ratifies the final budget modifications revisions for the period commencing January 1st, 2020 and ending April 30th, 2020, as shown itemized on schedule 2020 slash 01, which is attached here to incorporated herein and made a part hereof. I offer this resolution as read. Who second it? No one. Frank. Frank. Yeah. Seconded by Councilman Lombardi. Roll call vote. Councilman Shadow. Yes. Councilman Borelli. Yes. Councilman Lombardi. Aye. Councilwoman McDonough. Yes. Supervisor Schmidt. Yes. Motion carried. Okay. Next resolution number three is a resolution making appointment to the Town of Carmel Environmental Conservation Board. Councilman Lombardi, would you read three, please? <clears throat> Resolve the Town Board of Town of Carmel hereby reappoints Anthony Federici to the Town of Carmel Environmental Conservation Board for a term commencing June 14, 2020 and concluding June 13, 2023. I offer the resolution as well. Second. Okay, second. Second by Councilwoman McDonough. Roll call vote. Councilman Channel. Yes. Councilman Borelli. Yes. Councilman Lombardi. Aye. Councilwoman McDonough. Yes. Supervisor. Yes, motion carried. Okay, next resolution number four is a resolution authorizing addition to the active list of the Mayapac Volunteer Fire Department. Councilman Borelli, would you read four? Yes, resolved that the town board of the town of Carmel hereby authorizes the addition of the following names from the active list of the Mayapac Volunteer Fire Department. Robert M. Lewis, for this resolution as read. Second. Seconded by Councilwoman McDonough. <laughs> Roll call vote. Ms. Shannon. Yes. Councilman Borelli. Yes. Councilman Lombardi. Aye. Councilwoman McDonough. Yes. Supervisor Schmidt. Yes. Motion carried. Okay, next resolution number five is a resolution setting rates for the 2020 <laughs> seasonal employees for the Lake Cassie Park District. Councilman Shano, would you read five, please? Resolved that the town board of the town of Carmel acting as commissioners of the Lake Cassie Park District, hereby sets the following hourly employment rates for 2020. Physician lifeguard at $13 to $17 an hour, gate guard at $14 to $17 an hour. I offer this, re offer this resolution as read. Second. Seconded by Councilwoman McDonough. Roll call vote. Councilman Shadow. Yes. Councilman Borelli. Yes. Councilman Lombardi. Aye. Councilwoman McDonough? Yes. Supervisor Schmidt? Yes. Motion carried. Mm -hmm. Okay, next resolution number six is a resolution awarding bids for miscellaneous highway department materials and services. Councilwoman McDonough, would you read six? Sure. Whereas the town board of the town of Carmel has previously authorized advertisement for the solicitation of bids for various highway materials and services for the town highway department. And whereas such bids were received and opened and Highway Superintendent Michael Simone has recommended the awarding of the bids after equalizing all FOB bids based on distance to the town highway department yard. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the town board of the town of Carmel hereby awards the bids for the purchase of various highway materials and services for fiscal year 2020 to the lowest responsible bidders who met specifications at the unit prices and material types as contained in the memo of Michael Simone dated May 18th, 2020, which is attached here to incorporated herein and made part hereof. I offer this resolution as read. Second. Okay, second by Councilman Lombardi, roll call vote. Councilman Shano? Yes. Councilman Borelli? Yes. Councilman Lombardi? Councilwoman McDonough? Yes. Supervisor Schmidt. Yes, motion carried, thank you. Okay, next resolution number seven. seven is a resolution acknowledging performance of emergency repairs, Carmel Water District and Sewer Districts. Councilman Lombardi, would you read seven, please? Sure, resolve the Town Board of Town of Carmel, acting as commissioners of the various water and sewer districts of the Town of Carmel, hereby acknowledges the emergency performance of water and sewer district collection systems and distribution systems 
and treatment facility repairs, all as fully detailed in the memorandum of town engineer Richard J. Ferenzetti, PE, to the town board dated January 21st, 2020, which is attached here to and made part hereof. I offer the resolution as well. Second. Okay, seconded by Councilwoman McDonough. Roll call vote. The channel? Yes. Councilman Borelli? Yes. Councilman Lombardi? Councilwoman McDonough? Yes. Supervisor Schmidt? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. Okay. Next resolution, number eight, is a resolution authorizing extension of contract for supply of chemicals for wastewater treatment plants, Carmel Sewer Districts 2, 4, 5, 6, and 7, Carmel Water Districts 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 12. Councilman Borelli, would you read eight, please? Whereas the town board of the town of Carmel, acting as commissioners of the various water districts and sewer districts of the town of Carmel, has previously awarded the contract for bids for purchase and supply of chemicals for the wastewater treatment plant servicing Carmel Sewer Districts 2, 4, 5, 6, and 7, and the water treatment facilities servicing Carmel Water Districts 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 12 to Slack Chemical Supply, Patterson, New York. Whereas the town engineer, Richard J. Franzetti, has recommended the extension of said contract for a period of one year with slack chemical supply. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the town board of the town of Carmel, acting as commissioners of Carmel Sewer Districts 2, 4, 5, 6, 7, and Carmel Water Districts 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 12, whereby authorize the extension of the existing contract with slack chemical supply for a period of one year, commencing July 7th, 2020. <clears throat> and be it further resolved that Town Supervisor Ken Schmidt is hereby authorized to execute any more documentation necessary to effectuate the authorization granted herein. And be it further resolved that Town Controller Mary Ann Maxwell is hereby authorized to make any and all necessary budget modifications required in connection with this authorization. We we'll offer this resolution as read. I'll second. Seconded by Councilwoman McDonough and Councilman Channel. Roll call vote. Councilman Channel? Yes. Council Councilman Borelli? Yes. Councilman Lombardi? Aye. Councilwoman McDonough? Yes. Supervisor Schmidt? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. Okay, next resolution. Number nine is a resolution authorizing participation in update of Putnam County Hazardous Mitigation Plan update. Councilman Shannell, would you read nine, please? Resolve that the town board of the town of Carmel hereby authorizes participation in the update of the hazardous mitigation plan update being undertaken by the Putnam County Bureau of Emergency Services. And be it further resolved that the town supervisor, Kenneth Schmidt, is hereby authorized to execute a letter of intent such participation to be provided to the Putnam County Bureau of Emergency Services and Putnam County Executive Marion at Mary Ellen Odell. I offer this resolution as read. Second. Seconded by Councilwoman McDonough. Roll call vote. Councilman Shannon. Yes. Councilman Borelli. Yes. Councilman Lombardi. Aye. Councilwoman McDonough. Yes. Supervisor Schmidt. Yes. Motion carried. Okay. Next resolution number 10 is a resolution accepting a proposal for the installation of a workstation, workstation shields and partitions for the Town of Carmel Town Hall facility. Councilwoman McDonough, would you read 10? To resolve that the Town Board of the Town of Carmel hereby accepts the proposal of Brewster Glass Shop Inc. Carmel, New York for the installation of Lexon Shields partitions at workstations throughout the Town of Carmel Hall facility at a cost not to exceed $18,450 and in accordance with the proposal dated May 29th, 2020. And be it further resolved that upon presentation of insurance certificates in form of acceptable to town council, the installation authorized herein may commence immediately. And be it further resolved the town comptroller, Marion Maxwell, is hereby authorized to make any and all necessary budget revisions to effect the aforesaid purchase transactions authorized herein. I offer this resolution as read. Second. Seconded by Councilman Lombardi. Roll call vote. Councilman Channel? Yes. Councilman Borelli? Yes. Councilman Lombardi? 
Aye. Councilwoman McDonough? Yes. Supervisor Schmidt? Yes, motion carried. So for the benefit of the public, these are coronavirus mitigation measures that are being taken here in town hall. They're plexiglass slash Lexon shields. They're barriers between uh, residents and town employees. And they're also to protect the town employees from other employees. So they're being installed on workstation desks throughout the town hall, petitions throughout the town hall. It's just an effort to, to prevent the spread of coronavirus by installing a barrier between people. So uh, it's, it's a part of our mitigation plan here at Town Hall. And we're hoping that we're gonna get uh, monies that are gonna be reimbursed to the town through FEMA grants. So this is gonna be included with the, with the line that Marianne Maxwell has established um, for anything, any coronavirus measures that the town had to institute or any funding that the town paid for related to the COVID uh, crisis. So we are going to uh, include this when we make our submission through FEMA for reimbursements. But this is something that we absolutely had to undertake. It's uh, safety measures that uh, we needed to do here in town hall. And, you know, it's, uh, it's an $18,000 cost, but, you know, you really can't put a price on, on employee safety and resident safety either. So this needed to be done. All right. Uh, the next resolution. Number 11 is a resolution waiving building department fees for outdoor dining sidewalk cafes. So it's resolution 11 and Councilman Lombardi, would you read that please? Resolve the Town Board of Town of Carmel hereby authorizes the waiver of any building department fees required under Town Code Section 156-39.4 in the Town of Carmel user fee schedule related to the issuance of outdoor dining and or sidewalk cafe permits such waiver to be in effect until further notice or resolution of the town board. I go for this resolution as well. Second. Seconded by Councilwoman McDonough. Roll call vote. Councilman Channel? Yes. Councilman Borelli? Yes. Councilman Lombardi? With pleasure. Councilwoman McDonough? Yes, with pleasure. Supervisor Schmidt? Yes, with pleasure also. And it uh, looks like this Tuesday, June 9th, Phase two in New York State, as part of the reopening phases, is going to allow restaurants to, to move forward with outdoor dining. They, from all indications are from the governor and from the governor's office, is that uh, outdoor dining will be part of phase two, which begins on the 9th. So um, we've, we've sent some uh, correspondence out to restaurant owners in the town of Carmel advising them that it looks like that's gonna be taking place on the 9th. If they are interested in creating outdoor dining areas at their restaurants, they need to uh, contact Mike Carnazza, fill out the appropriate applications. You need to submit a design drawing of the outdoor dining area that you're intending on setting up. Mike has to review that and uh, he would issue a permit if everything is acceptable upon his review. So the town board, this resolution that they just approved this evening is allowing you to, to go ahead and do this, uh, submit the application without paying a fee. The normal fee for an outdoor dining application is $500, $500. So the board is waiving that fee to help the restaurants get reestablished, get back on their feet, and uh, start bringing customers back in again. So I think this is a great thing. Thank you, town board, for, uh, for doing this for the restaurant owners in the town of Carmel. They certainly would, uh, are, will, do appreciate what you're doing for them. So best of luck with the restaurants, and, and I hope everything works out for them on Tuesday, those who have outdoor dining and those who are trying to establish outdoor dining at their residence, at their, I'm sorry, their restaurants. So that concludes the town board uh, voting meeting for this evening. That was 11 resolutions. I do have uh, an announcement that I would like to make. Um, as you know, the school board budget votes uh, this year are being done by absentee ballots only. Uh, it's no longer, there's no in-person voting this year for the school budget or the, or the elections for school trustees. So there were, there, everyone uh, that is in the in, in Mahopac school district, if you're a legal, legal U.S. citizen, 
18 years old by June 9th of 2020, living in a primary residence within the district boundaries for at least 30 days prior to the vote. You and, and you're registered to vote in the school board a budget and election vote. You will be receiving a ballot this week. The ballots okay. actually were all registered voters will automatically be sent an absentee ballot and an oath envelope with instructions. The ballots will be delivered to your mailbox Wednesday, June 3rd, which is today. They, they should have been uh, starting to hit the mailboxes through Saturday, June 6th. 2020, that's this Saturday, completed, signed, and sealed ballots can be dropped off at the district office lockbox. That's at 179 East Lake Boulevard in Mayapak. Anytime from June 3rd through June 8th, 2020. <laughs> On June 9th, which is the last day that you can submit a, uh, an absentee ballot, you could drop that off at the, uh, it's assigned and sealed ballots, can be dropped off at the Mayapak High School guardhouse, located at 421 Bolden Place Road between 6 a.m. and 5 p.m. All ballots must be received by 5 p.m. on June the 9th. So if you're planning on voting by absentee ballot in this year's school budget vote, 2020 budget vote, and trustees election, you're, you're going to be receiving your ballots in the mail but you have to complete them very quickly and get them back and submit it back to the school district so they can be counted. So we don't want anybody to not be able to vote. It's just this information is important. And myself and, and superintendent of schools, Anthony DiCarlo, have been working together, both of us, the town supervisor and superintendent, to get the message out to the residents who are in the Mahopak School District that this is your opportunity to vote on the school budget and the trustees that are running, there are four of them. So as soon as you get your ballot, fill it out, sign the uh, oath envelope with instructions and get the ballots back to the uh, district office at 179 East Lake Boulevard anytime between June 3rd and June 8th. After June 8th, you have to bring it over on June 9th, the final day to the, uh, the guardhouse at the Mahopak High School at 420 Golden Place Road between 6 a.m. and 5 p.m. One other announcement that the superintendent had asked me to make was that anyone who is permanently disabled, if you are permanently disabled and you cannot deliver your ballot, your absentee ballot, if you can't get it back to the district office or to the high school guardhouse, he's asking you to email the following email address. It's Larocca M, L A R O C C A M, at mahopac.org. She's the district clerk, Melanie Larocco. And if you email her, arrangements will be made for somebody to come to your home and pick the ballot up from you at your residence. So if you're permanently disabled in the Mahopac School District, please don't feel that you're not, your ballot and your vote is not going to count. We will come, somebody will come and pick it up at your home. But you do have to email L-A-R-O-C-C-A, M as in Mary, at mahopac.org and request that your ballot be picked up. But it's just for permanently disabled residents in the Mahopac School District. It's very important. If you want your ballot to count, email the district clerk and she will arrange for somebody to come out and pick it up. So I would encourage all, all voters who are eligible to vote in the school district budget, uh, make your vote count. This, this is how you can do that. I know it's the ballots are getting to you late this year because there was a little bit of a, an issue with the first vendor that the school district hired to mail the ballots out. And uh, they, this, is, this is the best that they can do uh, in a short period of time to get the ballots together and mailed out to you. So look for your ballot starting today, right through Saturday, get it filled out, get it back to the district. Very, very important. Okay. So I wanted to make that statement tonight that the, the town is working with the school district to try to get the vote out. Thank you. Okay. That's the only announcement that I have tonight. Does anybody else have any announcements? Yeah, I do, Kenny. Similar with the Carmel School District also, they sent their ballots out. I believe they're due back by the 6th. 
Did they did they hit already, Bob? Did they hit yeah, your mailboxes? Yeah, we have ours already. Yep. You have them? And they're self-addressed stamp stamped envelopes. Don't cost anything. Just fill out your ballot. Choose your and vote you, if you want. Can you check with Dominic if we're going on live? And uh, just send them back in. Yep, we're live. Dominic? Yep. We're live? Yep. Sure Verizon's not... You sure Verizon's sure not replaying last week's meeting? No, I'm staring at it on the screen. Oh, I, no, Mike, my TV is on on Verizon. I see, I see all of us. Okay, it's somebody on. screwed up then. Thank you. I wanted to. I wanted to. Uh, thank you, Bob. Something. I wanted welcome. to address something if I could. Sure. All right. So. <clears throat> We've started, I've, I know that there's been a couple of um, workshops or meetings or committee meetings with regard to the master plan. Mm -hmm. And I know that there was a meeting, I believe, at the end of uh, April and another one last night. And for whatever reason, there's only two board members mm -hmm. who are able to participate on it or in it. And for whatever reason, I, I know that this this is run by the vendor, the company that's doing the master plan for us. But I think it needs more input from the entire board. This is a very, very big project that um, when, and I'm gonna speak only for myself, when I was out campaigning this past fall, people asked about it. We told them there'd be participation by um, all of us and the public as well. But in the meantime, right now, um, it was interesting because this morning I found out about the meeting that was held last night. I asked some questions uh, because we had not gotten any minutes or video feed or anything from the April 29th meeting. But sure enough, after I asked some questions today, I got an email, which I don't think we could open the link for last night's meeting. And, you know, the people who have been on the committee have done great work so far from what I understand. And, and I appreciate their effort, but, you know, I'm an elected official. I'm responsible to the public. I have to answer questions from the public. I'm responsible to them. Um, I need to know everything that's going on. I need to know the discussion of the master plan that we take we the prior master plan and what changes are being made to promote forward. Um, I have an equal vote, just like everybody else on this board. And I, I, I have to, we have to make some kind of different arrangement, Kenny with regard to input from the, the entire town board at these meetings. Now, I know we can, you know, if you could only have two, then it, then it, we don't fall into the open meetings law, but you know what, this is a major, major project. This is be something that's gonna affect the town of Parma for the next 40 or 50 years. And for my voice not to be there, uh, me to listen, me to ask questions uh, and maybe find out about it months down the road is not is not appropriate and i'm asking that uh and again i'm just speaking for myself other board members can speak for themselves but i want to be involved i want the input um and you know my experience my experience being on the planning board before being a, on the environmental board before being uh on the town board before i have input uh i want input i want to be able to listen i want to be able to have my opinion heard as this project moves forward down the line. So I'm hoping that some change will be made, whether it be by the vendor or at the end of the day, we're the governing body of this town. We determine how things get done, not a vendor uh, or not an outside consultant. It's up to us. Frank, if I can just, um, yes, and, we and, did have- And yes. I hope this doesn't, have, wasn't a, I don't mean this offense to anybody. I'm just stating my, my belief. I happen to agree we, with him. We, we did have a meeting last night. And as if you all recall, every single one of us back in January, there was um, emails that went out with, with, all of, with all of us in participation. And Mike, you even agreed. You said, you know, put your two, two cents in on who should be on the um, original committee. And it was decided, it went out in January. I haven't heard boo until their last meeting, not yesterday's, the one before. Um, at that meeting, after there was some discussion, I 
told you guys that I would promise you that I will get you the information that they get us. Okay. And that is what I, sorry guys, I worked today. I didn't get home until almost 430. So that's when I sent the email out. Um, and it is a shared file that um, the vendor put together and has a lot of information on it. I personally have not even had a chance to look through all of it. Um, and from what was decided back in January after, you know, there, there was no discussions was that there will be two board members on it. And if those two board members, if one of the board members, whomever could not go, somebody else from the town board would go to represent. Um, Nelson, Pope and Boris put together a schedule, which, um, you know, everyone was well aware of it at certain times. Yes, they are getting ready for the public to um, have their input. And by all means that everything will be brought to the town board. Anything that was up to date was given to you guys from last night's meeting. And we're gonna continue that. We can certainly rotate. I, I have no problem with that. Um, it's not excluding anyone. Again, guys, we spoke about this in January, January, February, March, April, May, June. Five months later, you know, it's coming up. So let's discuss it. I, I have absolutely no problem on that because it is a huge project and we want it to um, be right for all of the residents in the town. Um, so I have absolutely no problem. Um, you know, maybe I can have Bonnie come in and we can speak with her, Greg, if that's allowed. Um, you know, she can come in and we can try to, um, I don't, I'm not gonna redo the whole thing because, because we've been talking about this for a while, but maybe there was something else that we can do for more participation in it. Um, yeah, they, that, that's what it yeah. is. Um, so no, I, I understand what you're saying. What I, what I want to say, let me, if I can, Mike, when this was brought up in January, okay, a lot of it was done prior to January with regard to who was going to be on the committee, et cetera, et cetera. January happened, Kenny's in the hospital having a heart attack and having his surgery, and thank God he's back. But, you know, when, in January, on the first meeting of January, we had an organization meeting and we created liaisons to different boards and to different committees. And that's a vote that we took. And, and so the original emails that went forward were that there were gonna be three people uh, attending these meetings, um, Susie, Kenny, and Mike Borelli. And this is not the first time I brought it up. I brought it up back in April and there's email trail for it. And I, we went back and forth uh, a lot. And I said, well, how can you have three board members on this panel, which violates the open meeting law I said, if you can have three, then you can have five. Right. It has to be either two or five. Wait, and then the Frank, thereafter, the, I spoke, the, let me just finish. I, I didn't interrupt you. Let me just finish, Susie. So <laughs> and, and if you remember, the emails went back and forth. We had a lot of discussions that day. Kenny, at the end of the day, about 3.30, he was like, you know what? Let's deal with this for now. Let's leave it the way it is. I spoke to Councilman Borelli that night, and he said, Frank, um, you could have my spot. And I said, no, that's not what this is about. If, if it's either two people or it's five, it's it, you can't have three. But so, Frank, that's where you're wrong. Yes, there were three names there. There was mine, right. there that's was right. Kenny right. and Mike's, yeah. but there was only going to be two people the, allowed at the meeting. There was I'm never saying, gonna be three people at okay, the meeting. What I'm saying is this, whatever this is, needs to change going forward because I want a voice, well, I want input. And by the way, Susie, that first meeting I think was April 29th, correct? I believe I still, so. I, I'd yeah, have to look I still back. have not seen minutes. I still have not seen a video. I was not invited to watch the video. I asked other board members. Nobody's received minutes or video from that first meeting. So whoever is doing whatever, and I know I know it's not you doing it, I, right? You're not putting it together. But, you know, it was just very odd that we got minutes from last night's meeting after I started asking some questions all day today. But yet the first meeting from April 29th, we don't have many minutes. So I don't know who said what, who's even on the panel. And I'm sure they're all wonderful people. But you know what? If members of the public can be on this committee, so can myself, so can Bob Channel, and so can Michael Burrell. 
Um, I can certainly have Adriana send what they have for um, the first meeting, April 29th. I just wrote a note. Um, it, that's absolutely no problem. And like I said, I shouldn't we, have we, to ask for it as a board member, Susie. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't need to. No, I don't, you know, I, Frank, I don't need to I, ask. Frank, listen, I understand that, but I also shouldn't have to ask for a lot of stuff, too. Okay. If, Please, I, I'm not going to go there. I'm not going to get all riled up because I'm not going to air this on TV. All right. I'm the, I will have Adriana send you guys the April 29th information. After that meeting, when you guys discussed things with me, I made a promise to you and I held that promise. We had the meeting last night. I believe it ended about 9, 9.15, Kenny. I'm yeah. not sure. 9.15. Okay. okay, I get up for work at quarter to five. Sorry, guys, I didn't get it out last night. I got home at 4.30 and I got it out. So there was nothing... There was no skinniving or skinniving by me. Okay, I did. Susie, I'm not I saying that. You I'm not saying that. I'm, I'm not saying, saying that. Can I say listen, something? Please? I promise. If you, you want to be able to us in a day or two, it's no I, problem either. I but we still don't have the one guys, from April. April. And, I want to be able to watch the meetings, even if I'm silenced. Right. And I think I want to be able to watch the meetings, even if I can't. As as, so take out the fact of you could only have two people. I want the right to watch these meetings, they're very important. And then I don't wanna look, read minutes. I don't wanna look at pictures. I wanna hear what people are saying in the meeting that I'm not there. I have yep. the right to view this meeting. It is the biggest thing happening for the town and I wanna view the meeting. Yeah, and Mike, I have absolutely no problem with that. As long as it's not gonna affect any laws that we have, that's an unbelievable great suggestion. There's no problem with that. The people should also be able to view the meeting and see what's going on, even if they can't comment. There should be a Mike, link that the public could view this meeting. That Listen, Mike, we hired Nelson, Borges, and Pope. We're, okay, we hired MVP. Right. That is not what they want right now. Right. We hired you the professionals. You didn't hear what I said. No, the I did hear what you said. people should be able to watch the meeting Right, not and, not, and not comment. So do you think if they're going to watch the meeting that they're not going to comment all of us? We hired a professional, which you loved, which we all love. No we hired question a, about it. Okay, we hired them. So why would we go about what they're not suggesting? That doesn't make any sense to me. I can bring they, it to them. We didn't. Did okay. we ask them I, what I just said? Yes. Suggested? Yes. Yes, Mike. We yeah. have. I have. I have. We asked, we them, asked them. Can the public I, just watch? Mike, I have asked them about public, about the public being involved. I will no, ask no, no, them no, specifically I didn't say that. for your thing. For what? You're changing what I'm saying. No, no, no. I will ask them if they can watch. They told me from the beginning that they, they guys, they, they have the whole thing lined out. If so we there are people to watching this that are not commenting. All I ask is the same people that are watching this are allowed to watch what is going on with the comprehensive plan of the entire town of Carmel. It Mike, is very important. There's nobody, there's nobody around the corner commenting here now, and nobody around the corner will be commenting. They should be, be able to turn into whatever conferences, whatever group of people are having on the future of this town and listen with their own two ears. I will certainly ask them that. So the 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 way they it's my understanding the way NVP set this up is the first couple of meetings were information gathering meetings. They yes. were collect they they were collecting the information. They were putting it together. They were collating it. They were creating files for when it's rolled out to the public. And You're hundred percent right, Kenny. So, yes. so right now it's just an information gathering sessions where they're learning about the town of Carmel. They're getting gaining information from the consultants and those who are on the uh, on the meetings right now. There is a point in time where this will be rolled out to the public and the public will be brought in and they'll be participating in the process. Mike, right now, right now, it's just they're not at that point where it's going to be, where the public is going to be participating. I know that. And, and understand. I'm not asking for public participation. I'm, I'm asking for openness to the public. Transparency. They're, they're, That's what I'm asking for. 
I'm not asking for public participation. But as if but, the entire town is watching us right now, the entire town should be watching that committee on the future of this town. Well, that, that's not how it's set up right now, Mike. And board members, I understand that, you, that you're frustrated. And after feedback and, from a couple of meetings, I've changed my position dramatically. Okay, well, Susie, we have to check with NVP and find out how the meetings are going to be taped now. If the board wants them taped and they want them aired on the government access channels, they, somebody has to set up the studio and somebody would have to record the meetings. Right. I, that, I will speak with them, but this is not what was agreed upon, guys, with all of us. We all sat in with NVP. They went over what they wanted to do, and nobody said any of this. So all I'm saying is please let them. We hired professionals. I will certainly ask them the questions that Frank had and Mike had, okay? But I am not going to tell them, okay, or tell them how to do their job. We hired them at a nice money, you know, a nice money to do something that's right for us. Okay. I will ask them guys and let's, let's move on. We all want the same thing. Yes. Let, I will let, ask let them. Me, like, let me, yes, Frank, I will ask them. Let me clarify something. Please don't let mislead the public in saying that I had agreed to this and continue to agree to this. Before the last meeting, I asked that more of us be involved to listen to what they were saying and to be part of the process. I'm, I'm still not changing my position that I want to be part of the process. I want input. I want to be able to hear what they have to say. I, I don't know who's who's not, uh, Kenny's going to the meetings. I know Susie's going to the meetings. Uh, when is this rotation gonna happen? And if there is a rotation, someone who was not, who was there previously and now coming in is, is missing part of the information that was presented last time. There's an inconsistency of information that's going to be provided out. They, we provided, we hired them, actually the prior board hired them at $112,000, I believe it is. And we could tell and them what to do. What, well, that's exactly what I was going to suggest. Right, so let's hire professional companies we, to tell them, give but us let's, a plan of what to them, do, right. and then we and turn around and tell them, tell them what to do. Let's let them oh, know. I mean, well, let's let them yeah. know what I no. We're and Frank, the bill. I told you I would tell them that. I so we're, we don't have okay. to beat a dead horse. No, no, but but it's not. I don't want it horse. to be the same. Frank, can I you weigh in on any of this, please? Just, just from the from the point of view of process, there's there's a, a timeline, a path method that that uh, Nelson Pope and Voorhees has given to the board, where there is these series of information gathering meetings, and then periodically during that process, they are going to come to you, the board. And that'll be something that's open to the public right. to present their findings today. And then the board will give them direction as to where they want to go with the findings and the information that's presented with respect to uh, development planning, with respect to uh, how the zoning code will read and the like. So these, I, I, I think Frank and Susie and Kenny all know, I, I wasn't able to make last night's meeting. I was at the first one. Uh, and I, and it's, I understand it's a necessary part of the process, but they're almost rudimentary in terms of just basic information gathering and, and guiding uh, through what, what Nelson Pope uh, is giving as a process to get there. And the board, all five of the board members are going to have absolute input on anything that happens. So um, it, it, it did come up uh, in April about uh, the memorialization of the meetings. My understanding is they are going to be uh, uh, posted. Uh, I don't know why the April one isn't yet, but they, that they are going to be and they'll be viewable. Um, and there's nothing wrong with that. I don't want to interfere with Nelson Pope's process, whatever they feel to be the most effective way to do it. They're the professionals. But I, my understanding is that they are going to be viewable by the public uh, at some reasonable interval. And that's what uh, Adriana told me in, in April before the first meeting. So why that one's not posted yet, I'm not 100% sure. But I know that it ultimately will be. And if the board wants them to be at least broadcast live during the course of the process, I understand what Councilman Burley and Councilman Lombardi are saying. What, what I would say to you is um, I would defer to what your engaged consultant wants you to do in that process because that's their job. We have public works projects and design projects all the time that we have um, consultants work on and certain town members or employees work with them and, and the board doesn't get updated till a certain point on any design project and any public works project that happens. So this is, is to parallel um, at this point to that 
Um, and I think it probably can be worked out where you are at least provided with the information and maybe uh, the memorialization of the meetings and they can still adhere to their process in the best way to serve you. But I mean, that, there's nothing, all five members could be on, on, on the, the panel. You shouldn't have more than two at any given meeting. That, that I, I can't tell you that strong enough and everybody understands that part. But could all five board members be on the, uh, as members of the committee? Sure, you just gotta figure out who's gonna go. Okay, I just don't want three or more of you there at a given one, meeting. One of the issues that, um, you know, when we appoint someone to a committee, to an environmental conservation board or planning board, we, they come, we interview them, we speak to them, and it's by resolution that we appoint them to this committee. So, and I'm sure all the people, I don't know all the people who are from the public who are part of the, this committee or this workshop, uh, but you know, I don't know it, and definitely the public doesn't know it. And it just seems to me that, you know, I know that they had said originally that they were going to present stuff to us, but April 29th came and went, and I don't expect minutes, you know, the next day or the video the next day. That's silly. Come on. But that's five weeks ago, and I was a little taken back by the fact that there was one last night, but yet me as a board member never received any notification of what happened at the first one. Hey, Frank. And, and Frank, I, I mean, like I, like I, I said, I'm, I'm, 100% entitled Frank, as a board like member, I just, said like before, is, just like Kenny is, just like Susie is, just like Mike is and Bob, I'm entitled to that information. You, Frank, as I said before, and I'm not going to say it again, I will ask Adriana to please send you guys the April information. I don't know why it went out. I'm That's not, not going to, I'm not going to, I'm not going to say any, I don't know why it didn't I'm go not, out. Okay. So, so, so please. You in the I least. Know, zero. Yeah. I'm I, not know, I know, but Frank, this is the fourth time you brought mm -hmm. it up. So no. let's, uh, this is what I, I have. I am going to ask Adriana to please give you guys right. the stuff for the April meeting. Ask her. Okay. And then um, I sent you all of that and stuff. If you cannot open the thing, I know Bob said he was not able to open it up. Yeah. I actually I, I, contacted- I my um, Microsoft uh, Word to uh, open okay, it Okay, yeah. If you have a problem, let me know and I'll ask Adriana to resend it. All of that information is in there. And if you listen to what Greg said and what Kenny said, it makes sense. I'm just asking you guys to please, you know, it just seems, and, and I'm just gonna say this because you guys are all voicing your opinion. It just seems that because I'm chairing this, there's there's bad blood. Like, oh my God, Susie's chairing. Well, I don't chairing care who's something. chairing it. It doesn't I matter to me who's chairing it. Come on, guys. Like that. That's not going to care with less who's chairing it. it. The bottom I, I line want is, to I think the public it. should be able to see it. It's well, not just. I mean, not just that. That's but it. I want to be. I couldn't part care of it. less who's chairing it. So Whether you're well, competent to chair it, incompetent to chair it, I couldn't care less. Yeah. I think the public. We're doing the gathering of information now for the most important thing for the town of Carmel. And the public Mike. should be able to see it on the TV. Okay, Mike, With today's technology is doable. We hired the company. Like I said, I'm not going to beat a dead horse. You know, whatever you that You are beating a dead is. horse. No, no, no. There's I nothing told... about you. It has to do with the public seeing That's... what's going on. That's great. So. All right. All right, I'm guys, guys. With Kenny and what Kenny said, I will uh, ask Adriana to get you guys the April meeting, the April whatever they have. Okay, and you have everything after she get the April stuff. You have everything up to date. You have everything that I have. You have any everything that Kenny uh, has. So thank you, Kenny. Yep. So let let's let's talk to and let's talk to Bonnie from NVP and yep. explain explain to her what the best best way to bring in the other board members to bring them into the process, get them involved, so they can participate. And to Mike's point. How do we, how do we, you know, bring the public in and how, so we can make them aware of what procedurally where we're at in the process. And so they can, they can understand, you know, what's been done thus far. Yeah, All right. I'll, so I'll I think, I, I think we should, and let's end this discussion for tonight because it's, you know, to be quite honest with you, we're saying the same things over and over again. So Kenny, right. I'll contact Bonnie tomorrow and just ask her to put together some type of um, update for, for the public. Okay, it, in all honesty, we were going to put a press release out. Um, uh, you know, we everything is planned out. We were going to put a press release out. Um, so I'll just ask her to up that up, to hopefully this week. 
All right, and that's Susie. Susie. Me, okay, I'm sorry. She did send me a copy after I told you I couldn't open it, and I Thank didn't. You. I could open it afterwards. So maybe she could send us also the first copy and bring everybody up to speed what's going on at this point. And Susie, ask her if she, ask Bonnie or Adriana if they have any suggestions or recommendations or how they've handled it in other municipalities mm -hmm. where the where the full board is inclusive, where the full board is part of the process. For the you know along and i understand that they did lay out a timeline yeah. for when that was going to occur but let them know that this board is very proactive and this board wants to get involved they want to educate themselves because really at the end of the day board it's all of you who are going to be voting to adopt this new master plan yep. so yeah. so you need to educate yourselves and you need to be part of the process and understand you know where where we're going with this so susie if you could do that yep. um you know, and get back to the board and let them know what that what that end result is. So, yeah. so okay, so this way we're all brought up to speed and, and everybody's aware procedurally. And if Bonnie wants to email the board, if she wants to send out an email explaining that, then give her all the, the town board members email addresses mm -hmm. and let her reply to that if, she, if she'd like to. Yep, I will take but care she should, of it. She should have our all of our them. email addresses anyway, right? She has them. Yes, she yeah. does have them. Right. Yeah. Listen, Maybe I, I will I, take it. And, again, this is, this, and I started out early on saying this is not anything about against anybody personal at all. What I'm saying is no, this can't be the first time. Uh, it can't be the first it, time that they've dealt with a town board that has wanted to be involved in the process, the entire town board. I just, I can't believe that it's never happened in their history. I mean, if it does, and there's a lot of unproactive boards out there, but I can't imagine that's- Well, the Frank, Frank, they've done a lot of these. This isn't their first comprehensive that's plan. Right, right. right. So, so I'm sure that they've dealt with this in the past. They did, they, sure they have. So, you know, and they, they understand, you know, uh, that, that board members would want to be inclusive they want to be included and part of the process so we need to find out how we can do that here in carmel and That's we'll do that that was the only thing i wanted to bring up tonight. yeah and we'll do that and frank i'll be honest with you if i have to sit out a meeting i'll sit out a meeting and i'll and I'll, and then you could take my place you know can you hear here's the only thing i want to say to that and i appreciate that i really really do but there's 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 then there's gaps right then there's gaps if well kenny had heard something at the first meeting, then Frank comes in at the second meeting, then there's some, you know, Frank doesn't know what happened necessarily, what Kenny's thought process was at the first meeting, and then Bob fills in for me. It just it, it just doesn't seem to be the right way to for it to process. But, That's all. Yeah, you know, I hear you, Frank. But as Frank, as Greg said, you can't have three board members. Listen, nobody knows that better than I do. I know that I said, and I uh, said that from the, the beginning. Right, so, that, it, so then how do you, so then how do you bring all five board members into it then? Uh, if it could be, it's, Penny, it's very, it's very simple. Ask, it's a public, Penny, it's a public Penny, meeting all right. of the. Please uh, let me just ask the professionals who we hire guys, please. That's all I'm asking. Like Greg mentioned before, there has been many things that the two town board members have been a part of. And then those two town board members brought everything back to the town. I'm asking you to please let me contact the people that we hired, okay, and find out what they would recommend. That's all. Good enough. Good enough. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you, board. Um, is there any other board members that uh, would like to make any announcements? Oh, just quickly, Penny. Last week, I just need to make a small, minor correction. So I know that these masks were provided to us. All board members got one, courtesy of Marianne Shalusian, but she did not make them. It was Laura's boutique up in Carmel in the Hamlet that made these wonderful masks oh. for us. So I just wanted to uh, thank um, Laura for her handiwork and craftsmanship on behalf of all of us town board members. Yes, nice. Thank you. Very nice. Thank you. And I also want to mention that I heard from the superintendent at Carmel Schools, Andy Irving, and uh, the Carmel High School graduation this year is going to be at the Overlook Drive-In Theater up in, where is it, Bob? Channel? I'm, I'm not sure. I think it's in Connecticut. It's in Duchess. It's in, I think it's, I think it's up in um, Poughkeepsie, isn't it? 
Yeah, it's, I think it's in the Poughkeepsie area. So, so their graduation ceremony is going to be at the drive-in theater, and it's going to be on June 22nd. That's the same date as the Mayapak graduation ceremony, June 22nd. But Mayapak is going to be at the Mayapak High School. It's a, it's a drive-in theater the theme that they're doing. The cars are going to be lined up in the practice field uh, between the high school and the middle school. And there's going to be a stage set up with the superintendent, the high school principal, valedictorian, salutatorian, and, other, and others are going to be up there. And it's my understanding when they call their name, they're going to, they're going to come up with their parents. And their jacket, the jacket for the diploma, is going to be there, which they're going to – it's not going to be handed to them. It's going to be there for them to take. Um, and then the, the diploma will then be mailed to them. But that's the way they're doing it in, in Mayapak this year. Um, and also in keeping with what we're doing for the, for the 2020 graduating seniors of both Mayapak and Carmel High School, we're going to have parades in town here. The Mayapak parade for its 2020 graduating senior class is going to be on June 26th. It starts at 630. The lineup is going to be on Route 6 by Villa Barone. And it's going to travel uh, east on Route 6 towards and ending at the Maypac Fire Department. Along the way, there's going to be a reviewing stand with the superintendent of schools, the principal of the high school, and others on the reviewing stand. And when the student reaches the reviewing stand with their parent, uh, the, the superintendent or the principal is going to announce who they are and uh, where they're going to be attending post-secondary uh, education, which college they're going to be going to. If they're going to be entering the armed forces, they're going to, you know, uh, let the public know that and or trade school. So wherever they're planning on going after high school, that will be announced as well. So um, the students are going to be riding in the cars with their parents or parent. And if they have a sunroof on the car, they can stand up out of the sunroof. We talked about having them wear their caps and gowns, which we thought was nice, and having signs along the route with the students' names on them. So it's going to be nice. Uh, so Mayapex is going to be on June 26th, and Carmel's is going to be the following day on June 27th. It's a Saturday up in the hamlet of Carmel. The lineup for that, for Carmel's uh, parade, is going to be at the Paladin Center. And then they're going to travel down Seminary Hill Road to Route 52, through the hamlet of Carmel, across from Lake Lanida, past the courthouse, make a right turn on Fair Street, and it's going to end at the Carmel High School. And what I mean by end is they're just going to drive away from there. So there's no festivities and there's nothing going on either at the high school or the Mayapak Fire Department. That's just the ending point for the parade. So uh, we're looking for for two nice events. I need, I'm going to need help from the board. I can't do this myself. Uh, I've tried doing a lot myself and found that, you know, when you try to do things alone, you don't get everything done. So I'm going to need help. Bob, I'm going to need help from you. I'm going to need help from you for the Carmel Parade. For sure. And Frank, Mike, and Susie, I mean, you can help out with all of them, but uh, certainly for the Mayapak Parade, I'm going to need some help coordinating that. All right. So, Kenny, if I can, one of the things that I thought of, I know we were supposed to have that, you know, the week, uh, the spirit week before the events. Um, as you know, my beautiful daughter, Alexa, is graduating from Mayapak High School and Bob's uh, wonderful, smart son is graduating from Carmel High School. So I thought it'd be nice if um, in light of the situation that we find ourselves in this year with the graduating class, perhaps at the town board meeting during that spirit week, if we were to wear our mayor pack attire and caramel attire, and I thought it'd be a nice, uh, something nice. I got my caramel Rams card. I spoke to Bob, I spoke to Bob around and he, he thought it was a good idea too. So maybe Frank. You know, Susie's got a ton of stuff. Bob, I know Kenny, you've got a ton Susie. of stuff. Susie, you, you wear your cheerleading uniform. Yeah. <laughs> I'll bring my pom-poms. <laughs> bring your pom-poms. Frank, you wear your football jersey. We'll wear the jacket that I that you that you coaxed out of us. That's the one, yeah. I still have it. No, you do. So anyway, Kenny, Mike Mike Borelli, what, what do you want to do? What do you want to wear for the parades? Kenny, can I say something? Yes, go ahead. Is everybody finished? We're finished, yes. I just want to thank, I wasn't here last week. Everybody knows why. 
but up until about uh, two hours ago, the phone and the text messages still start com still are coming in. And on behalf of the of Tommy's family and myself, I just want to thank everybody in this town and from Colorado and California and Florida, where I'm getting the calls and texts from, for what they said about my late partner. I feel sorry for the people in this town that never had a chance of meeting him. Uh, also, about four weeks ago, three weeks ago, I was hoping we were live, I could say this, but about four weeks ago, my, my daughter, her husband, her two-year-old and four-year-old moved back to Mayapak, and she's nine months pregnant, expecting June 17th. And her third day in the house, her dog got away. So anybody on the Vista, uh, Split Rock, West Lake, North Lake area of Mayapak, very aware of Toby the, the Beagle. I cannot tell you how many people in this community came out for this dog. I guess, you know, my daughter looking nine months pregnant, climbing rocks in the woods, word got out. But um, kids on bicycles, Mary and Shalusi, I bumped into people that are searching uh, on their lunch hour. And I'm only bringing this up for one reason. Her husband, who was born and raised in Elmsford, in a very small, close community, said to me, and I want to end with these words, said to me, I grew up in a really great community with unbelievable people. I can't believe a town as big as Mayapak has so many amazing people in it. And, you know, we're out there looking for the dog and he just looked at the straightest face says, these people are amazing. So I'm, people are pulling us over saying, did you see him here? Did you see him here? So for everybody that helped in that too, I just want to say thank you on behalf of my daughter and her husband and my grandchildren. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Oh, thank, thank you, Mike. Thank you. I'm, I'm glad that, that Toby was found after two and a half days of being on the loose, being on the lamb. I'm glad he was found safe and sound. And I'm sorry, Mike, for the loss of your partner, Tommy Boniello. You know, it's a loss to the entire community, believe me. Yeah, certainly was. I knew Tommy for many years, but a great guy. And it was very, very sad to hear that, that he passed away. But uh, his memories will always be remembered. And his legacy of giving back to the community in many, many ways. His, his uh, footprint is uh, all around town. So it's, it's all around town. Exactly. Wherever you go. So um, thank, thank you for that, Mike. And town board members, uh, does anybody have anything else before we close? No. 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 OK. All right. So we're looking We're we're going to we're going to try right now. We're scheduled to meet back at the town hall here uh, in the meeting room one on June the 10th at 7 p.m. for a town board work session. Open to the public. Am I right on the 10th? Yeah. yeah. We noticed the public hearing, uh, virtual public hearing for that day. Oh, we did? Yeah. Yes, we did. We did. Oh, we for did. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So you'd have to kick that public hearing out and re-notice it, you know, um, if you're not broadcasting the meeting that way. Um, you'd okay. have to deal with it. All right. All right. Well, board that board is, uh, at the board, sewer one additional borrowing. It's the sewer one borrowing. Yeah, additional additional borrowing. Yeah, board. What do you want to do? What what's your pleasure on this? Well, why is that, Greg? If if we're if we noted the public hearing as a virtual public hearing, we're making a public statement now that town hall hopefully will be there. I mean, right. we, we're not hiding yeah. anything from the public. We, you have to give the public a chance to be heard on it, and if they and if they're not if they have been noticed that the public hearing is seven o'clock and on the 10th by virtue of logging in uh, uh, to this meeting number with this password or, or, or using this link and they go there and they can't speak or have the opportunity to speak, then you have a problem with due process. Can so, Dominic tie in some type of link to uh, the meeting room in town hall in case anybody attempts to do that? It's entirely possible. I just don't, I don't know. Uh, from a logistical standpoint, whether you can do both. I mean, certainly you can provide well, the, more, odds, the odds of somebody calling in yeah. on a Zoom meeting for this public hearing 
It's low, very low. I, I, I agree on that particular topic. You're probably not going to get a lot of participation. Maybe it could be done both ways that, that you know, you can have it set up where, you know, that the board can hear any comments that are made. Uh, it, but you, you would, absent doing it exactly the way you noticed it, you have to re-notice it. Otherwise, it's subject to being thrown out. Let's see if we could do it live hey, in the Hey, in Greg. The yeah. Greg, Greg, if I brought my lap, if I brought my laptop out to the dais, out to the meeting, and I set it up in front of me, and if anybody came on, you know, uh, to for the public hearing to make a comment, I would see it, and then you know we can acknowledge it. Then their comments. Take the comments. I, I just want you I to confer that. Anne with... has to record that, though, right, Anne? You would have Anne. Yeah. But I, I think if if it was broadcast, it could be it could be the minutes could be taken of it. You'd have to confirm it with Solomon Data and with Dominic uh, Zach with Alaska Productions. So let's it's, see what uh, we can do. The technical part of it. All right, let's see. We'll see what we can do. Yeah, okay. All maybe right. We'll do it both ways. Or what, Greg? I'm sorry. Maybe you'll do it both ways. Okay. All right. All right. All right. We'll, we'll work on that during the week. Okay. All right. Uh, unless anybody else has any, any other comments or announcements, we're going to close the meeting. So moved. Okay. Okay. I need a motion to close. So moved by Councilwoman McDonough. Second. Seconded by Councilman Channel. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Good night, everyone. Good Be well. Night. Yep. Good night. Good night. Stand by, everybody. Talk to you soon.